G'day you brainies, it is the Verb back with you again, welcome here to the final uh, round robin game for the TCG Draft League up against Adrian. Um, this is going to be a fun one, Adrian drafted like this uh, Roxy, Weezing, Flying Flip, Coco, Detention Gas style deck. Pretty, yeah. pardon me, pretty uh, nuts with the damage spread, but... I was going off there. I don't know if you guys would have heard that through my mic, but pretty crazy uh, damage control deck. I believe he's going to choose to go first here, which is super good for us. Oh, psych, we're going first. That's unfortunate. He starts with the Flying Flip Coco. We open with a pretty okay ish hand. It gets really good next turn, obviously, because we get Oak set up, but right now it's a little bit dead. I'm a little bit concerned, too, because my opponent, uh, the old mate Adrian, has a lot of ways to damage spread, and that can be kind of scary. So. Definitely concerned about that. Not a great start from us, so all I can really do is attach an energy and then pass. So that's not ideal. But uh, next turn, we can do some cool plays. We do see he's just going to go for the flying flip here. A couple of coughings down, so not a hugely impactful turn from it either. That's also one of Adrian's only two um, double colorless energies, which is good to know. So we are going to go for the Professor Oaks research here. We're going to get Zerua for sure. We're going to get Sneasel for sure. And then I was contemplating do I want Noibat? Or do I want the Meganadel? Sorry, not the Meganadel, the Poipo. Um, on this next turn, because I have the Noivern in hand, and Noivern is very strong in this matchup against Adrian. Um, incredibly powerful Pokemon because it prevents him from playing his double colors energies and his counter energies, uh, energies, which means he's just stuck playing basics, and that means that his plays are a lot slower because his attackers will normally require two or more energies to go off. So. That could be pretty handy. I choose to grab the Sneasel though, and I choose to attach a Stealthy Hood to the Noibat. And the reason for that is because um, I know... I get rid of a Fighting Energy, which sucks. Um, I know that Adrian has the ability to bring up a Coughing here into a Weezing. And the Weezing, if he was somehow able to get the Double Colorless Energy onto it, and then used Roxy to do 10 Chip, could potentially knock me out. If he was able to Roxy discard two Coughings into getting a wheezing up with a DCE for knockout, he could have just knocked out my Noibat and that would have ruined my strategy and I was like, nah, I don't really want that to happen. Um, I have put like some other things at risk, but I do feel confident that I might be able to save something like the Zerua this turn. Um, but I am a little bit worried maybe about the Sneasel, because I don't actually have the Weavile in hand. I was a little bit iffy about searching out the Sneasel. I thought that maybe Poipole could have been better, because then I could have guaranteed the Neganadel on uh, this next turn, so definitely regretting that one just a little bit, but I'm hoping that maybe off of the trade from Zoroark I can find the things that I need. I'm still a little bit afraid, but not of... There's another card that Adrian runs, which is Grimsley, which allows him to move three damage counters. If he was able to use Grimsley this turn with the damage that's currently on the board, he could have knocked out my Zorora, and that would have been scary, but luckily nothing is dying just yet, and that is great for me. I draw into an Aganadol, which would have been perfect if I benched the Poipole, but that's fine. So we are going to guarantee that we can get up um, the Noivern and the Zoroark, and we have an easy discard for the Zoroark in the Dark Ride. So the main thing we really need to get rolling at this stage against Adrian, like we're in a very good spot, but the primary thing we need is not only our Weavile, but we need some energy uh, so we can actually start charging some things up. Like ideally hitting red and blue right now would be amazing, we ain't hitting none of that, so the annoying part for me was grabbing that Sneasel. If I had grabbed a Poipole, this would have been much better, we would have been in a much stronger spot, but right now we're in a pretty bad spot actually. Yes, we have Zoroark down and the Noivern, but we have no way of accelerating energy to them because the Ganondorf's in our hand are useless without a Poipole, and we can't get any more draws out, so all we much kind of in the back here, um, primarily just because he just has a very set up board, the Lucky Egg, everything's coming down. We see the Flying Flip, and our Weaver, uh, sorry, the Sneasel is almost knocked out. We do get a Poipole, though, which is a very, very good top deck. It will allow us to set up, and I'm like, okay, if I can trade away one of these um, Naggers and find a way to get to Weavile, this could be great. Now, silly me, maybe on this turn, I could have used the Acerola here to heal my Sneasel, and that could have been really solid for me, but I decide against it. I kind of say, right, Sneasel's going to get knocked out by... Oop, let's fix that real quick. Is that going to get fixed? Alright, we're good. 
I, I realize the Steam is going to get knocked out regardless. Like, I could try and bring it back, but there's a good chance I won't draw into what I need. I discard his other adventure bag, which he didn't need. So that kind of sucks. And now he just gets a free knockout on my Sneeze on the bench. So not a great start to this game. Not being able to have a Sneasel on the board. And Adrian taking the first knockout with me. Not really having too much of a reply. And of course the irony is that I top deck into red and blue. So I could have saved my Sneasel last time with Ace Roller, Benched it again. And then red and blued onto it. And then I would have been able to get a knockout with this Guzzlord. And it would have been incredible. However, I am seeing five cards this turn, so I'm not feeling too bad. And I do have the Fishing Rod to get back the Sneasel, so I'm thinking, okay, this might be alright still. We're going to Ultra Conversion, and we're going to see five cards out of the deck this turn. We see a Hooper, and we see Oak Setup. So I'm like, okay, we've got some plays here. We can use the Oak Setup, and where are we going from here with the Oak Setup, though? Um, there wasn't too many like attacks that Adrian could declare that I was super afraid of when I was first thinking about, like, what could he actually do on this next turn? So I was contemplating, do I want to use the Ultra Ball? Oh wait, did it freeze? Okay, cool. I was going to say, yeah, I was thinking I'm using the um, Professor Oak setup here because it can guarantee me a Sneasel. And I was like, okay, what else do I actually want on my bench? Do I want to grab anything else? Do I want to grab a Poi Bowl here? Poi Bowl could be kind of nice because I could go for um, some Stinger shenanigans to put some pressure on that way if I'm behind on prizes. So that's always an option. But then I remember like both my charge up Nagas I believe at this stage are in the discard so it's going to be kind of hard to do that. I'm thinking it's probably just better not to take anything else. I was thinking I wish I could have taken another Sneasel but I just couldn't here. So I bench one Sneasel I'm thinking okay maybe Sneasel will be fine. <laughs> I was thinking like how is he going to be able to do 70 damage in one turn. Um, I still couldn't find any energy either so this was absolutely ridiculous at this stage. Um, I've drawn my 5 cards. Not a whole lot I can do here other than Mountain Munch. I'm like, okay, maybe Adrian can't get a knockout. I mill his Giratina. I'm like, come on. I'm giving him everything he wants in the discard here. This is ridiculous. Um, I was hoping, okay, maybe I can mount some form of comeback here uh, in this game. Definitely not looking super great at this stage for me. Well, it's not too bad, but I'm worried about a second sneeze of getting knocked out. And the mistake that I made potentially was not using the Ultra Ball. To get a second Sneasel on my uh, on my bench to guarantee that I had one because it's very easy for Adrian to knock out a Sneasel but it's not easy for Adrian to knock out two and the math that I didn't pick up on heading into this next turn was that Adrian has a Giratina in the discard and he could use Grimsley so that automatically gets him 40 damage onto the Sneasel and then he can just bring the Weezing into the active use Detention Gas for the extra 10 and then use Sputtering Sludge. And I was like, oh, well that's a thing. And then I have no target for my red and blue as well. So if I just benched a second Sneasel here, there was no way that Adrian could disrupt that play and then Guzzle could start just destroying him. But unfortunately, that is not what's going to happen. Instead, he is going to be able to go for Grimsley into all those plays that I was telling you guys about. And it's just looking pretty, pretty horrendous for us right now. We just don't have any acceleration in play. It is not looking good at all. We are going to see another Sputtering Sludge plus a Detention Gas kill a Sneasel. So his two prizes have been both my Sneasels, and it's not looking great. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm in, I'm in the back here. Guzzlord is almost dead. What what can I actually do? And there are a few players going around my mind. I saw that I had a Hooper there, so I could... Um, I could use Ace Roller to return something, bring out the Hooper. So like I could return the Guzzlord in the active to hand while benching the Hooper. Then the Hooper goes to the active, I can attach the Darkness Energy and then I can go for the Rogue Ring. Um, I could use the Ultra Ball to guarantee a Sneasel onto my bench. And th these are the players I was thinking of, so... I... Do I really just discard the Hooper? Okay. I choose to discard the Hooper instead and grab the Sneasel. So I must have another play in mind. I don't know if this is the right play, but I apparently have another play in mind. I definitely should have gone for the Rogue Ring, I think. But I was a little bit worried because Adrian does run Persimian, but like, look at his board. What is a Persimian going to do unless he has the DCE? Nothing. So uh, this next turn, I'm like, oh, I really don't want to get rid of this Guzzlord from my hand, but it's looking like the most likely thing to discard out of all my cards. Um... And I know that the big play, if I can get it done, is getting that Neuburn set up. Because if I can prevent Adrian from being able to use DCEs, that's great. So we are going to fire off. I think I go for the trade first and get rid of the Cherish Ball. Yeah, because I don't really need the Cherish Ball for anything. Um, and we do hit 
Not a whole aggressive, but we finally find a darkness energy. I'm like, holy shit, they exist. Uh, I just attach it over on the Zoroark, because I'm confident Zoroark won't die. And I'm like, okay, I'm probably going to have to discard this Guzzlord. I'm not a huge fan of it, because Guzzlord is super strong in this matchup. And I'm going to lose both of them. But I'm thinking long term. I know that if I could just use my Acer Rollers in a smart way, then I could probably prevent him from being able to knock anything out and stay in the game. So, um, we're going to go, I think, on that line of thought. I'm not too sure yet. It hasn't actually happened yet. Definitely having a long think about this. Like, it's funny looking back on this game, especially because it like, happened this morning that I'm recording. And how much differently I could have played it to maybe be a bit better, but you do get a bit of tunnel vision when you're playing, and it's hard to look at all your options and try and find the best one at times. But yeah, I think I'm going to choose to use Naganadol's uh, ability here to discard that Guzzlord. As much as I don't really want to do it, I think it is the play, because if I can accelerate into better things, it is worth it. So we are going to get rid of the Guzzlord, and... I am able to accelerate into a field blower, and I'm like, hmm, interesting. And I get a Lucemi. So I have the red and blue in hand. I have the Sneasel in play. I can lose the Guzzlord, and then next turn I can go big with the Neuvern, uh, potentially next turn. And that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking about. So I'm going to go for that Mountain Munch one more time, hopefully mill something good. I mill a Tate and Liza. I'm like, that's a pretty good card to mill. I'm still pretty good about getting rid of that one. So... I'm hoping I can get off this red and blue next turn, and we can kind of go ham from there. We see a Gladian uh, from Adrian, so he's going to be able to look at his prizes and grab out one card from his prizes, add it to his hand, and then uh, he takes one card from his hand and puts it into the prizes. So, oh, so he puts Gladian into the prizes. So, what are we going to do here? He gets a Lucky Egg down as well, so it's like, okay, he's got double Lucky Egg and double tag. I do have a Field Blower. I'm hoping that I might be able to draw into my second Field Blower, because if I can, then that would be awesome. So we see the Spiraling Sludge come down, gets a knockout. I have Altar of the Moon in hand, so I know I can bring the Zoroark up into the active right now, and it has free retreat, but I also know that the Neuvern is in the same boat. It has free retreat, so it doesn't matter. So I can bring the Neuvern up here, and all I'm really looking for is a Psychic Energy. I have almost everything else I need. I can use... Um, the field blowers to get rid of the other stuff. I think I'm just going to fuse me with Zoroark up because I was thinking I have Alter of the Moon. That's free retreat. I draw for turn into another red and blue. I'm like, okay, now is the time. Adrian, it has such an advantage. He is up three prizes to six. I need to start taking knockouts. I need to start putting some pressure on. So how am I going to get this done? So I have the Restoration Dark Ray in the discard as well that I can use. So that's why I'm thinking I'm going to discard the Darkness Energy and probably the other red and blue here. So we're going to get rid of red and blue. I don't want to really get rid of an Acer Roller, but I'm contemplating it. I think that it's better for me to get rid of the Darkness Energy because I have a way of getting it back, but I'm contemplating Lucimine instead. I think the Darkness Energy was probably the better card to get rid of there, but at the same time, this is fine. We do get Weavile down and we do get the double energy onto it. And I think actually what I'm going to choose to do is discard the Darkness Energy with the Zoroark's ability, which makes sense as well. So we can just go for the trade and probably get rid of the Darkness Energy. We want to keep the Acer Rollers because we know how busted they are. And as much as we hit a second Field Blower, and I'm like, holy shit. And we hit a Poipal, I'm like, holy shit. All I need for the perfect turn is for this to hit a Psychic Energy. And we hit the Psychic Energy. I couldn't believe it. After, like, I mean, look. We talk about sack turns. This was an absolute sack turn. I hit the absolute nuts. I get double Field Blower to get rid of all four of the tools that Adrian runs in his deck. So both spell tags, get them out of here. And then we get both Lucky Eggs, get them out of here. I could not believe it. Adrian was so mad when this happened. And then I saw I had the easy attach. Altar of the Moon allows the easy retreat. And then I can go for Sonic Volume for Knockout because it does 120. And then because of... Um, uh, so with Sonic Volume... It also means he just can't simply play down another DCE and then immediately get a knockout. He can fly and flip the Coco, but that won't security knockouts. He's down to three prizes, so if he can't knock out this Neuvern anytime soon, that's also great. I choose the Restoration here with Darkrai because it allows me to get one of my energies back into play. So that means uh, next turn, uh, the plan that I kind of have heading into next turn is that if... Um, oh, sorry, I'm going to try and get that back. Ooh. Let's just try that again. There we go. Cool. 
Uh, I just left it on for too long, once again. So I can Sonic Volume, and then the play next turn, if I can find the Guzzlord GX off of all my exponential draws, he is going to be the big card for me. We find a Poi Pulse, so that's perfect. Um, Guzzlord GX is important because the Glutton GX can pull me right back into this game, taking big prizes out of nowhere. So we're going to see what Adrian wants to do. The risk for Adrian is he could bring up the... Um, he could bring up the Poker Doll, but then I just have the potential of free retreating my Neuvern, and then if I find my other Psychic Energy, attaching it to my Naganadol GX, and then Venom shotting his Coco, and then he has no energy on the board. So we see him bump my Stadium, um, and we see him bring up Giratina here, and he says, right, well I don't want you to take another knockout, so you can have Giratina instead, and I'm going to Steven's resolve. So I was like, okay, if I can draw into Reset Stamp, this would be like the perfect turn. So, I have a guaranteed knockout on this uh, Giratina by just going into my Darkrai GX. But I looked at this board and I said, if I can find the Guzzlord GX, the Giratina is weak to Dark. So then I can go for the Glutton and take three prizes, take a prize lead out of freaking nowhere. And then if I can find the Reset Stamp to disrupt his Steven's Resolve, then that is insanely good for me. So that was the... Uh, that was the thought process heading into it. I was like, maybe if I can get this like series of plays off, then we'll be in a good position. Um, I just had to kind of hope that we would be able to get to an established board. I just didn't... I, I couldn't believe that we... Again, like similar to the... We can ditch the Poi Pole. That's, that's no drama. We can get rid of the Poi Pole. Um, we can kind of go ham after that. So we Ultra Convert, get rid of one of these Poi Poles, and we get to the Guzzlord. And I'm like, Ooh, we got the Guzzlord. That's crazy. So we got the Guz, and I was like, okay, we can get rid of Giratina because it's Dark Week, and then all I have to do is use Trade with Zoroark, and if I can find a Reset Stamp, then we are looking so freaking good. I didn't want to allow him to have any easy knockout either, um, so that's why I wanted the Reset Stamp, because if he found Persimian plus DCE, that's a really easy knockout for him, and that could put a little bit of pressure on us. But then I thought, no, it doesn't really, but we'll see. So we get the Guzzlord, and I'm like, okay, cool. We have a guaranteed... Um, three prize turn coming up because you have free retreat and then we can shadow connection all these on and i'm wondering because i got so hyped when this happened did i actually forget to use trade <laughs> i may have forgotten to use trade we'll see i'm getting pretty hyped but as you can see i am able to use um the shadow connection to get all the energy that i need onto my guzzlord gx he is set up good to go i do still have the zora okay cool i did not forget about trade we're gonna get rid of probably let loose it's not very useful in this situation can we find reset stamp we can't that's okay though we do find a hood which doesn't really help us at all however i was like hmm you know what i could do here i could ace the roller up my zoroark and then bench the zarua with a hood to prevent him from having any easy knockouts on my board because he could just grimsley into the wheezing for an easy knockout and i was like hmm not a huge fan of that so i do think i consider the ace roller play here and I believe I do go for it. So Acer Roller back my Zoroark um, to fully heal it, bench the Zerua, put a Stealthy Hood on, and then I go for that Glutton GX. And because we were able to knock out the Giratina with the Glutton GX, we get to take three prizes. So we grab a Darkness Energy, we grab a Altar of the Moon, which is very good, and we also grab the Blocephalon, which is fantastic. Uh, Blocephalon can't wrap up the game here, but um, the one thing that probably could wrap the game up for me um, is the mini Guzzlord if I'm able to get him back with the Lana's fishing rod um, if I can have this many energies in play because what I can do on my next turn if I want to since he's done the damage with Roxy um, is I can find it off of the fishing rod and then use um, Weavile's shadow connection to shift all the energies over to Weavile Acer Roller the Guzzlord back up into the Neuvern so it has free retreat, bench that Guzzlord, and then everything on Adrian's board will get knocked out by that Guzzlord for the last two prizes. So it's looking like we've got this one actually surprisingly wrapped up. However, he does have the team play Persimian, and I'm like, mm, this is a little bit dicey for me. This team play Persimian could knock me out on this next turn. However, even if it can, um, I think we still have a good chance to just win potentially because what I could do uh, if I find the fishing rod is I could actually use it to grab the charging up oh my god the charging up Naganadel um, instead okay, can we... there we go so he's gonna try and get down the sand tree and he's looking at this as a win con but I'm like mm, it's not really a win con we see the polka doll 
and uh, he's going to bring up the Passimian, I believe, and if he has his other DCE. The thing is, though, that Adrian only has one more DCE that he can use. Um, if he can't find it here, then we're in a pretty good spot. He brings up the Coco, though, which gives me the belief that he doesn't have the DCE at all yet, and if he can't find it, then um, our win plan is very, very straightforward, like I said. Uh, we're just going to try and get to that Guzzlord, and then use the Acerola players to set up for the knockout. And uh, I believe Guzzlord has the ability to knock out everything on Adrian's board, because the Oracorio is also weak to Dark. So, it's looking pretty, uh, pretty solid for us here. <laughs> but, we're going to wait and see. Adrian definitely has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, but he does have to take two knockouts here, whereas we potentially only have to take one due to our Guzzlord. So... Even so, like, he knows that he can't one-shot this. I can Tyrannical Hole next turn and just knock him out and attach an energy to the Zorua into Zoroark and then get a knockout there. And then whatever he brings up, I can just use Zoroark to knock out and that would be the game. So I think at this point, Adrian is kind of conceding because he realizes there's no way, unless he finds his DCE, that he will get a knockout this turn. And if he can't get a knockout this turn, the game is effectively done. So, yeah. Uh, like I said, I think uh, when I was doing the draft recap or whatever, I did feel pretty strong heading into my matchups against Adrian. So yeah, take that first up, let's head into game two. Let's play. There we go. Into game two we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I am keen for this one. We, I believe, are choosing... Oh, sorry, Adrian wants to go first. So we're going to go second. If we open with one of our supporters, it doesn't matter, and we open with one of our supporters. So it's all good. Well, I say it's all good. It's not that great. I'm a little bit concerned here because we do get the Lele, Whew, me, which does get us to the um, Professor Oak setup, but it's not exactly a great board to be using Professor Oak's setup on. So that's a bit concerning, and drawing that selfie hood doesn't really change too much. Um, this one could be a bit of a grind game in terms of us trying to actually set up our boards. Um, not sure how well Adrian is going to go. He does have the Sand True though, which is obviously very solid. Um, looking back on this matchup, there was definitely a misplay that I did. Um, but I also think in terms of the game, it doesn't matter too much. It was kind of trying to make two different plays. But I mean, I couldn't make them both work at the time. So... Um, I see him put down the coffin, and I know that if I can put ten, uh, sorry, 20 damage onto that with my Blacephalon with a Fireworks Bomb, then it'll be in range of a Glutton GX from my Guzzlord later in the game. So that was a very important thing to keep track of that I definitely wanted to do. So he just does that. He doesn't attach an energy, and he passes, and I'm like, okay. We draw into Hooper. Now, Hooper's really solid if I can get it into the active, but I don't have a guaranteed way of doing that this turn. I don't necessarily have a guaranteed way of doing it next turn either. So... We're going to grab out Lele. Thank God it's in there. And that means we can guarantee an Oak setup. We can guarantee getting the ball rolling. Um, and because the energy we have, we can guarantee Ace to roll it into Hooper on the next turn if he chooses to go like Spattering Sludge. So I have to choose. Do I want a Poipole or do I want a Noibat? And I think I choose Poipole here. I, I would be surprised if I chose Noibat. I think Poipole is by far the better choice. Um, at this stage, I don't see Noibat being that great if I can't draw into it. So yeah, I'm just going to grab the um, the Poipole, and I believe I just attach a Dark Energy to the Blacephalon. Because I'm just saying to myself, like, right, if he damages the... I uh, shouldn't attach it there, I should attach it to the active, and yeah, let it roll. Because, like, my thought process was, I attached to the active, because Blacephalon could still be good in this game. Um, against Adrian, if I'm able to get a Boom Burst GX into getting him down to the three pies Blacephalon Fireworks Bomb, it can be really solid too. So I just attach here. I know there's no real way that he can knock me out heading into next turn. So I'm just going to pass. So I know that worst case scenario, I'm attacking with Blacephalon. Best case scenario, he damages me somehow this turn. And then I can potentially Ace the Roller up the Blacephalon and go in with Hooper to guarantee going into red and blue next turn um, by putting Stealthy Hood on the Weavile. So that was the uh, that was the thought process. We see a Steven's result, so I'm like, okay, this is not great because we can't guarantee Hooper into the active and he's going to get cards into his hand that he really wants. So that, that wasn't ideal. 
I would have much preferred if he had gone for like the Fury Swipes with the Sandshrew, but obviously if you have Stevens Resolve, it's a very good card to declare. So I was like, hmm, all right, we're not in a super great spot here, but we might be able to bounce this one back. We're just going to see what we can do. Uh, definitely, definitely on the back foot though in this matchup. So, well, not back foot. Like, I, I think both of us are in a good spot, but the Stevens Resolve, if I can't punish it, is definitely. Okay, so I'm not sure why it wasn't playing, or maybe it was frozen. No idea. But uh, yeah, we're back over here. We drew a charge up again at off a turn. I'm going to get a Stealthy Hood onto the Sneasel, and I'm going to go for the Fireworks Bomb to secure that damage on the Weezing in the back, because it does seem to be the main attacker that Adrian is going to want to go with, so two on each is the plan. Don't need any more on that Weezing because he has no way to heal it off. And um, in retrospect, given how the game played out, I kind of wish I made a different play heading into this turn. So he is going to get some Roxy damage on my boys. Now I'm a little bit worried about Zerua this turn because I believe he was able to discard, uh, yep, two Weezings. So Zerua is in a bit of trouble here if um, Adrian has the detention, or well, he has a detention gas, and then if he has Grimsley, but he can't use Grimsley, so that at least is nice to know. Um, still definitely a bit scared, we do see that DCE come down, so that's one of his double colorless energies, uh, which obviously is going to put a bit of pressure on here. Uh, so we have to wait and see, what can I do? So he goes to the Fury Swipes. Three flips and he gets two of them heads, so free 20 damage on my Blown. I'm like, hmm, okay, that's a little bit annoying. We do talk like an Ace Roller. I'm like, okay, we got options here. So the two options were one, knock out the Alol and Sandshrew, but then it brings up his Detention Gas, and that's bad because then everything takes chip. Or Ace Roll the Blacephalon by and then bench the Hooper, and then use Rogue Ring heading into next turn. Now the fear with this is obvious. I could just lose things like the Sneasel or the Zerua. If Adrian plays a really smart turn, so I was definitely worried about that, but I felt like it was the only play I could really go for. So we are going to attach, and we are going to go for the Ace Roller Retreat play, because I was like, okay, hopefully Adrian can't do too much. So, okay, my thought process was, I was going to um, go for the Rogue Ring, and I was like, okay, I just got to find a red and blue, and then even if one of Weavile or Zerua gets knocked out, the like other one of them will be able to get the job done. So I was like, okay, this is fine. This, this situation should be relatively fine. Let's see what we have in deck with our rogue group. I didn't think... <sighs> Ooh, I, mean, I didn't think anything in hand needed to be played. Um, I do definitely regret the rogue ring. I'll explain kind of why. So I do choose to bring up the charge up in Naganadel. Can't use it straight away, but I have a feeling but I will use it soon, and then we are going to fire off that Rogue Ring. So the first thing I noticed with the Rogue Ring is that my Weavile is prized. So, that means that I'm wanting to go with Zoroark, but I know there's a good chance that Zoroark will get knocked out on this next turn. So, I make a bit of a bad middle ground play. Um, I think I get Noibat trying to set up for Noiva, knowing how strong that card is in the matchup, but then I'm like, mm, maybe not. So I can't get to the Weavile, so that Sneasel right there is kind of just not useful at all. Um, now, in terms of bench Pokemon, uh, I definitely would like to be able to get Zoroark up next turn, and I'd rather do it with Red and Blue <sighs> than anything else. So, what I should have done here is I should have grabbed a copy of Red and Blue. 100%, and I should have grabbed like Noibat or whatever, but I think what I do that is my misplay here is I choose to not grab red and blue. I should have grabbed it regardless because even if the Noibat died, sorry, not, not even the Noibat died, I should have grabbed red and blue plus Noibat because even if he finds a way to knock out Zorua this turn, um, then I can still bench Noibat and there's still like a good chance he won't be able to knock out the Noibat. And like this turn, if he doesn't knock out the Zorua and I can evolve into a Zoroark, then that would have been like infinitely better and lo and behold he he isn't gonna knock out my Zerua so I, I misplay that turn I should have definitely grabbed red and blue because it was a card to grab and I should have grabbed Noibat and then next turn I bench Noibat and if he knocks out Zerua 
through damage shifting shenanigans and I know that he has a very good chance of not being able to do it again with the Grimsley so that means that Noibat should be safe and that means that then I can get up the Noivern on the next turn and then just go ham with the Noivern. But I'm in a very precarious spot because as you guys can see my um my what do you call it uh oh actually no this is what I should have done big brain. What I should have done, thinking about it, looking at this hand, is instead of the Noibat, I should have grabbed an Ultra Ball. Because Ultra Ball would have guaranteed me getting into Noibat if I needed to get it on the next turn. Or, alternatively, um, oh god. Um, or alternatively, it would have meant that I could have gone into, um, Zorua. Which would have been great. But now instead, I'm sitting here, like, not being able to do anything. So I could have grabbed Noibat or... Zoroark on that turn, and now I've got the Zerua, which is going to die to Detention Gas. Because I chose to put the Stealthy Hood on the Noivat, because I know that Spattering Sludge is going to kill it. So I'm like, oh dear, I can attach an energy to the Hooper, and then Rogue Ring again, guarantee the Red and Blue, and probably guarantee evolving into the Noivern GX, and then just kind of praying from there. So we do see the Rogue Ring, we guarantee the Noivern GX. I don't know why I didn't grab Red and Blue though. Yeah, I realize it like there that I should have grabbed red and blue, but what I didn't realize was that like this is all just a turn too late because now Adrian can use Grimsley plus Spouting Sludge to knock me out. So it's all just gone to shit. Adrian once again is taking a massive advantage. I can get a return knockout next turn because of the Hooper, but yeah, he's just got the Grimsley, so he moves all that damage off of uh, I think it was the Lele or the Naganadel onto the Noibat. It may even be from the Hooper, to be honest, because the Hooper doesn't matter if he hits it for weakness. But yeah, he moves it from the Neganadil, and then all he has to do is declare Spattering Sludge, and that 20 chip just knocks out Noibat for free, and I just let that happen. So I have a return knockout, but I don't really have anything in play that can do a lot, so we're in a pretty bad spot here. We lose Noibat, and I'm like, mm, this is not ideal. I don't really have a lot I can do here, so I'm going to need a decent top deck, Ultra Ball is pretty good. Ultra Ball is very good in this circumstance. It can allow me to search for a Zerua if I want to try and set up for the Zoroark again next turn. So I'm not worried about Pissimian, but at this stage I'm like, oh god, like Pissimian could just knock him out if he has a DCE. That could be bad. So what I'm actually contemplating grabbing this turn is the Let Loose Marshadow to disrupt Adrian's hand. It would be like playing a reset stamp right now, only it takes up a bench space. I am going to go for the um, the Field Blower, because I know I have a guaranteed knockout here with the Hooper, and we are going to go for the Ultra Ball. Pretty easy discards in the Choice Band, and probably the Blacephalon here. Um, could be the Stinger too, don't really need Stinger that badly in this matchup. And we are going to grab, I'm thinking that Marshadow, and yeah, we're going to let loose. Um, hopefully disrupting Adrian's hand, making it very hard for him to have, uh, say, the DCE that he would need to get the return knockout on the next turn. We actually hit the Noivern GX, which is quite funny. And we hit a Poipol, and Poipol is actually quite a nice thing to bench at this stage of the game. If I'm feeling like it, I, I don't think it's that bad of a Pokemon to bench here, the uh, Poipol. It does mean that I'm a little bit limited in my attacks, but I do think it is the appropriate thing to bench. And we're just hoping. We have six prizes. Can we hit the Weavile GX off the prizes? That might give us a chance of winning this game. And we do! We hit it! And I'm like, holy shit, we actually hit the Weavile off the prizes. There is um, no way that he can knock out my Sneasel this turn. So I'm feeling pretty good. He has a Brooklyn Hill, and I'm like, mm, that's a little bit annoying. Hooper can't attack on this next turn, which is definitely scary for me. We see the Diancie come down, but as long as he doesn't have the DCE, I'm not feeling too afraid. We do see a Tate and Liza. And I'm getting a little bit scared right now, because if the DCE comes down, then we are in a world of trouble. Um, if we don't see it, though, then we're in a pretty good spot. So we just got to hope here, guys, that we can uh, get out of this one unscathed. Unfortunately, we are like one energy short of being able to reply with a knockout to um, to Adrian on this next turn. He attaches there. Um, we just don't have any way of actually securing a knockout. He gets a big chunk of damage off on everybody. We draw for turn. It is another darkness energy, which doesn't do a lot for us. The only plus is that we can evolve our uh, Sneasel into a Weavile, which is great. Um, but we don't have charge up that we can use. We can attach to something for turn, and we're probably just gonna have to Rogue Ring here. But Rogue Ring can get us some pretty good cards. It can go to red and blue for sure, 
and it may grab us like Fuel Blower or Altar of the Moon at this stage, I think would be very good cards to see. So we'll have to wait and see where this one's going to go. I, I definitely am a little bit annoyed that I can't attack with the Hooper this turn. Lele's almost dead, which kind of sucks, so I've got to try and find a way of maybe healing that to prevent Adrian from getting some free prizes. Definitely can't re-punish him with a knockout. I'm just hoping that off of this Let Loose, I've put him in a situation where he can't draw into a way of getting a knockout. So we are going to have to just Rogue Ring. There's no point using Devilish Hand since it only works on GX and EX. And with the Rogue Ring, where are we going to go with this one? So I'm thinking definitely, oh my god, I was inactive for too long. God damn it. There we go. Definitely going to grab the red and blue, and we're definitely, I think, going to grab that Altar of the Moon. Like I said, I think it is just the best card to grab in this situation. I can't imagine anything better. Allows Hooper to have less of a retreat, and then we can get a lot of energy acceleration going um, and being in a good spot. So I was like, yep, this is perfect. These two cards are very good. Adrian doesn't really have any hand disruption, unlike other players we've gone up against. So that makes it very good for us. And um, I was feeling okay, even though we were behind on prizes. <sighs> Hopefully. We were behind on prizes last game, and we still like dragged it back really easily. So, I think that I'm not too worried about being behind on the prizes here because I know how fast my deck can recover from a situation. As he does just go for the flying flip and passes, um, he does use the Gladian and get down the Alolan Sand Slash. We're going to be wary of that, but we do have the red and blue here, and we can go into the Ganondorf GX with the Ultra Conversion, and we just so happen to be holding. A Noivern in hand that we can discard and the Poipole to use for the Ultra Conversion. So everything is kind of coming up Millhouse here. Discard those two, get down the Naganadol GX, and we can just go for the Psychic plus the Dark Energy into Acceleration. We can retreat the Hooper just for one cost. We have an Energy in hand that we can attack. We have an Energy from the Discard we can bring up with Charge Up. We have Energy out the Wazoo, and we can also just discard the Poi Pole with the Ultra Conversion. So things are looking real good for us right now. Um, and we draw into an Acer Roller, which is also just incredibly strong. So we've got the Charge up here, get another energy onto the field of play. We do have a Darkness Energy we can attach for turn as well. I'm a little bit concerned about Flying Flip, but I know that it can't knock out my Lele at this stage. And I'm thinking like, what is my path to victory? And I'm thinking that the way I can win this game uh, potentially is by knocking out the Alolan Sand Slash with the Glutton GX uh, late in the game. We can take a prize soon and then return KO. So the way I'm looking at it is that if he does have a DCE, he can get a return knockout on the Hooper, and that would suck. So what I'm going to do here is uh, be the lesser of two evils and say, right, we can get energy onto this Ganadol this turn, and then I have a really spicy idea for next turn, which I think would basically seal up the game if I can get it off. So. What we're going to do here is try and shift all the energy we have onto a good spread of Pokemon. And then, I don't want to stamp just yet because he has four cards in hand. Maybe if he can find the Oracorio and go off with that, then they'll stamp him after that. We'll see. But at this stage, we know that the, um, the Hooper won't die. And what I want to do here is just go for that Venom Shot. And we are just going to chip that Sand Slash to only have one HP remaining. The other important factor with that is that um, if I end up bringing up like a one prizer to get knocked out, like say the Mars Shadow, just leave it up in the active until Adrian knocks it out, which wouldn't take too long. And then it can set up Adrian for the Blacephalon turn, where I have the Darkness in it, sorry, the Psychic Energy in hand, and then I could just go with Blacephalon knocking out um, the Sand Slash and the Coughing, and that would just be the deck. So there is that option too, which I'm definitely considering. Um, well, it wouldn't close out the game because it wouldn't take the prizes the same way, but it would take away his two attackers, and that would pretty much wrap the game up, I think. So, I'm feeling okay at this stage. Definitely wish there was 10 more damage on that Sand Slash right now. It would have been amazing. We do see the Flying Flip come out, so that Martian on the bench is almost dead. And my plan this turn is to knock out the Coco, and I'm trying to think of the best way that I can knock out the Coco without getting reverse knocked out by a Pissimian. And I'm thinking about it for a while, and then the idea comes into my head of how I can probably do it without getting return KO'd. So, um, what I what I didn't factor in, I guess, maybe in the thought process, was that my Tapu Lele doesn't have a resistance, because I believe that, um, uh, I believe that the... 
what do you call it? Uh, I believe that Persimian does 30 for each Pokemon on your bench. So that would do like 160, or it maybe with team play is just every Persimian that is on your bench. Um, if that's the case, then he can't secure a knockout. So the thought process going through my mind at this stage is a bit of a wacky one. Definitely there's a couple of clear players I can make. I could just go for the Venom Shot and knock out his Sand Slash. But I've actually got a spicy idea here that if I can get uh, seven, sorry, <laughs> seven. If I can get uh, four energies onto my Tapu Lele, then I'll have enough where I can knock out this Coco with my Lele. Which is definitely like a, uh, a weird play for sure, but it could end up being a really effective play. Um, as I don't believe Adrian would have a return way to knock me out. So, I'm just double checking, like, I guess, with the Persimians. I don't think I ever double checked it, but it definitely could have been a way they could have knocked me out. Uh, if it was 30 for each Pokemon and not just specifically for Persimian, then with a uh, Diancy boost, he would have got knocked out, but I'm assuming he just didn't have it. So, yeah. Oh, can I pause over that for a sec? Boom. Team play. Uh, this attack does 30 more damage for each of your bench Pokemon. So yeah, all Adrian needed was an energy uh, upon reflection of the play that I made. But okay, so the reason why I did this, I, I remember now. Um, the reason why I did it this way was because even if Adrian does get an energy and does get the knockout on my Lele and goes down to two prizes, um, I felt like I had a way around this no matter what because the Lele had the four energy onto it but there was still so much energy in play, especially with the Naganadil recharging it all, that um, on the following turn, I could knock out his Persimian, and Adrian then didn't have a clear line for winning, because all his energy would have been on that Persimian. I would have gone knock out Coco, uh, knock out Persimian, and then knock out uh, Sandslash, and that would have been, sorry, yeah. Knock out Persimian, and then knock out Sandslash, and then he had nothing on board to attack with. So we are gonna return the Lele, and then we're gonna bench the Lele, and then we're going to search for a supporter card, which is going to be our Lusamine. Uh, because Lusamine can get back both of our Acer Rollers here. So we are going to get the Acer Roller back well, next turn. And then what we can do is free retreat because of Ultra of the Moon. And then Lele is coming up into play. So this was really important. Um, I definitely didn't realize that team play would, um, would have knocked me out. I'm not sure why the gameplay is frozen right now. Let's try and accelerate it back up to where it should be. One sec. Okay, go back up to where it should be. So we brought the lay. Wow, it did it again. It's just frozen. It. That's weird. Okay, hold on a sec. There we go. Cool. So I got all the energy onto Lele, and then I energy drive. So basically, the way I've done this is that I have enough energy still in play to where even if Persimian can knock out my Lele, um, I should still be in an incredibly strong spot because I have the Oaks Research, which can allow me to search for the Guzzlord. So I can bring the Naganadol into the active, use the research to grab Guzzlord, knock out this Persimian with the Guzzlord, he doesn't have a return knockout heading into next turn, then I can retreat the Guzzlord and attach the rest of the energies back onto the Naganadol, and then Venom shot the Sand Slash for game. So, felt like I kind of had it wrapped up. I guess Adrian right now is just hunting for that one energy that he requires to be able to get the knockout. Um, yeah, I assume it's just the one energy that he needs to be able to knock out this uh, Lele, and I don't believe he's able to find it. So I think instead what he just does is he puts up the Polka Doll. Yep. Which isn't going to help him because he doesn't have any way to stop bench damage. Which means he rode on bikes, and I can just retreat the Lele for free. So I get a bit lucky that he didn't draw into the energy, but like I said with my plays, as you can see from the top deck, I got the Gars Lord anyway. So even if he knocked out Lele, I had, I think, all the energy that I needed in play for um, Guzzlord to get the reverse knockout, maybe? Did I have enough? I, I think, uh, no, I might have missed it by one. Yeah. Might have missed it by one. But we do lose Samine, get these back. Even if um, Guzzlord couldn't have got the knockout, then I could have got it with something else. So it doesn't matter. Again, maybe a bit fortunate there that he wasn't able to find the energy to get the knockout. But what I can just do here is get the free retreat thanks to Altar of the Moon and then Shadow Connection, and now the game is kind of out of Adrian's hands, I think, because it's again a situation of him needing to take a lot of knockouts and me not needing to take that many of them, 
especially the poker doll is rendered kind of useless here due to the um, due to the Nagano being able to snipe everything. I just cherish ball here because I'm just gonna see if I have like the Guzzlord GX in deck because that would obviously wrap the game up as well but he's not there so I'm just like nah, this is fine I'm just gonna go with Naganadol and uh, be able to Venom Shot into the Alolan Sand Slash GX take two prizes and then I have the Guzzlord already in hand so no matter what he brings up if he doesn't have the Polka Doll inactive I can Ace a Roller into Guzzlord for the game so at this stage I have enough energy on the bench as well so even if Naga gets knocked out, there is enough energy on bench to where I can just bring the um, Guzzlord up. I do make a cheeky play here of moving the one energy from the Ganondorf onto my Lele on the off chance that it gets knocked out. Just in case, I'm going to put it all on Lele because I know that Lele is not getting knocked out anytime soon. Neither is Weavile, so next turn I can just bring up um, the Lele for the free retreat um, and then go with the Guzzlord. And if he brings up anything other than the Pokedol, then I'll win that way, and I have the easy energy recharges to just attack with Naganadol again next turn. If he chooses to be passive, and I can just punish that. We do get another Altar of the Moon and a Darkness Energy. And at this stage, it is checkmate, because either he just keeps a doll here, and I just keep on charging up Naga and getting knocks out with that, because then I just need to take one more prize for game. Or he knocks out the Naga now, but then I bring up the Lele, have the Stadium in hand to get the free retreat, go into the Guzzlord, and have the four darkness energies that I need to be able to use Red Banquet to knock out anything that Adrian currently has on his board in play for the knockout and take two prizes because of the additional effect of the Red Banquet. So yeah, feeling like this just went very well. Like obviously I got incredibly lucky to top deck the uh, Weavile as the first prize, but that is the nature of the game sometimes. I guess you gotta get lucky like that in order to win. So that worked out pretty well for me. Um, definitely feel like this matchup was favourable though, just because I have things like the Acer Roller to heal, I had the Fuel Blower to get rid of his very good tools, um, and I have Stealthy Hood to prevent things like the Detention Gas from affecting a lot of my basics. And Adrian is going to scoop, so we do take the dub here, um, 2-0, so the only times I actually ever lost during the entire time of the, um, the season was to Aaron in those two games where I just got rolled twice. So I'm feeling very happy with that. We end up finishing, I think, top seed out of everybody um, in the competition, so I was really happy with that. I'm really happy with how the team performed. GG to Adrian. Uh, we are going to go into playoffs now. Uh, so it's myself, Adrian, Jordan, and Aaron. Not sure who I'm going to get paired with. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully it's going to be a good one. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Anyway, my name is The Bird. 